Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I would like to continue the message of this morning. The question, who do you think you are, became a statement, who are you? Or this is who you are. And you hear it from the perspective of the creator. You hear it from a perspective that almost no one gives you. They tell you who the creator may be. They tell you what you would do perhaps to please the creator. And I come and I say, Here's what the Creator thinks. If you are a piece of everything that is, if you are as ancient as God, then inside you is the wisdom of the ages. Tapping into that is part of the evolution of human nature. These were the classes that were given today by my partner to show you some of the things in your future. But dear ones, you're not there yet. So we want to talk about some uncomfortable things. I want to talk about the struggle, the revelations, the changes that are occurring now. It's a current channel. It's not about the past. It's not about the future. It truly is about how conditions are. It will give you some insights, perhaps, during the channel. Give you some things you didn't expect. All of this given in love. If you will then review with me some of the things I gave you some time ago. And you will compare today what's going on. I would like to tie the two together. I do this to validate that which was seen to that which is now. So you will understand there may be credibility when I tell you what the future may bring. We told you that the dark and light struggle on the planet is going to be enhanced. The struggle is going to be enhanced. When you turn on the light in a dark place, it starts to reveal all manner of things you never saw before. Especially if it has been dark for a very, very long time. Dear ones, we use the metaphor of dark and light for low and higher consciousness. A higher consciousness is one that sees above the things that a low consciousness would wallow within. Where integrity is high. And where the goal is far higher than anything that ever has been. Benevolence, compassion, solution, harmony. That is high consciousness. And it represents a consciousness of a human being who will see that in every aspect of their life. Do no harm. Have a benevolence that would say all solutions must have win-win in the discussion. That hasn't happened yet, but that's where it's going. And to go there, certain things have to change. When the shift occurred, we told you it would be a full year of recalibration before most of you could then come out of it and actually start working with the puzzle. And the puzzle is you've got more light than you think. And it's only a puzzle because the habits that you carry into the light are habits that you learned in the dark. So low consciousness is where you've lived and survived. 
It's also helped to give you self-worth issues, for you knew you were a high-consciousness person in a low-consciousness world. Suddenly, we are telling you that the world is starting to change, and that the higher consciousness will eventually win, but in the process, there will be struggle. And the struggle will not necessarily be yours. It's going to be with the rest who have always been in the dark and have no idea that the light has come on. We told you to be wary and aware that darkness or low consciousness is going to be very aware of more light and will band together band together to frighten you we told you about an army you saw it you've never had an army like this a physical army of the dark without borders imagine the only thing the army was really together in was the promotion of fear keep it the way it was make the struggle the way it used to be that army has come we warned you about it. They don't even have a common language. They don't have that which is a country with any borders. They'll take whatever they can and exist and spread. We also told you they would be defeated. Today, the news. You will say, well, we have almost done it. We've almost defeated them. That's what you think in 3D. Because darkness is struggling. And they're not going to give up easy. And they're simply going to go to other ways and other places to do what they're going to do. The struggle is still here. Watch for things to pop up that will obviously be them in another form. They want to return this planet to a low consciousness overall planet without light starting to come, without evolution, without harmony and benevolence. They want to keep you in an old energy so that they can control you. And that comes with the wealth and the greed and the control that also accompanies low consciousness. You're starting to see it. What happens when you turn the light on in a dark place? We also told you a phrase that we have used. No more fence sitting. We gave another phrase that said, when everybody can talk to everybody, there can be no more secrets. That was given over a decade ago. What's happening today? Well, the first thing that you would have is the disillusion of an old boys club that keeps secrets. Have you seen it yet? What happens is, without secrets, the ones who are doing things out of integrity will start to show and it's universal it's not just in show business it's not just in politics it's everywhere and they start to fall the heroes the comedians the ones that you turn to for fun and laughter the ones for wisdom and law making and they're starting to show themselves and what you should know is that they've always been that way so why now would you see so many being exposed? Dear ones, this is proof that there is a light on this planet that is beginning to evolve. A light that is taking the wind out of the sails of conspiracy. Those who would keep quiet on these things are no longer keeping quiet. And against all odds, almost all of those who have taken their power to reveal it are women. This is different. For in an old consciousness, the woman would never do this. She was not in charge. She was not powerful. She did not have the wherewithal to be heard. And even if she was, there was a surrounding club that would say, not today, honey. Not today. Well, here you are today. And it's time. Do you see the workings of light? Do you see how integrity is starting to hold up and to change? 
you will say yes but it's not changing everywhere <laughs> you are so impatient <laughs> when it does you will know it <laughs> by the ones who fall the hardest dear ones we told you of these things and now they're here there's more I want to teach you about fear this is the weapon of dark consciousness if there is anyone on the planet whether it's a leader or whether it's your next door neighbor who wants to control you light worker all they have to do is to get you to fear fear is interesting you call it an emotion but it's not no it's a state of mind that particular state of mind will be all encompassing and the result of that state of mind is that all other things will be erased and subjugated to fear logic goes away all of the other emotions go away everything leaves and fear comes to the forefront I'll give you some examples if you don't believe it because this is the weapon of the dark side of life if they can get you to fear they've got you the mother gets the phone call in the middle of the night her teenage boy has not come home she's worried the voice at the other end says this is the police department and everything from then on she can't remember it hits her in the stomach what's happening next what are the next words what are they going to be the fear of every mother what are the next words what are they going to be and if she's not careful that feeling in the pit of her stomach within three seconds will be in her brain and she'll be able to, unable to tell the police department her address her phone number or maybe not even her name because fear has taken over and then the next words come well we passed by a bar and your son had had too many things too many beers so we wouldn't let him drive home we decided to take him home we'll be there in about 10 minutes and then it's okay you see what I'm saying you got three seconds between the point of origin to the point where it takes over I'll give you a scenario it's not that unusual today you're flying in an airplane and suddenly it hits one of these unusual void pockets of pressure and the airliner drops a thousand feet instantly all of the carts between the aisles go to the ceiling there are people who are screaming there are those who are wetting their pants raw fear raw in its very rawest form something is horribly wrong everybody's gonna die that's what you think of course at the lower altitude you level out you find out who's injured pick up the pieces land as soon as you can it's happened over and over and you're fine now let me ask you a question while you're falling a thousand feet let's interview some of these people here's Sally over here Sally what are you gonna make for dinner tonight Joe what is your favorite movie and that simply isn't possible because they're in fear raw consuming fear everything else has gone out the window in preferences who they are what's happening next it has taken over completely and totally my partner tells the story in one of his books it was no accident that I had him on the plane 
Because there was a propensity, a potential for an engine to fail. And it did. And on the plane where he was with his computer open and working on a channel, the starboard engine at night caught on fire. It creates a stream of fire that is four times as long as the airliner. They're going very fast. Fire blows away very well. The people on the starboard side had the color drained out of them as they realized the point they were at of the potential of an exploding engine. What happened next, I want to tell you. My partner did not join the fear. This was his test. He knew very well that it wasn't his time. That was intuitive. It wasn't. The pilot instantly stopped the fire, pulled the bottles, as they say, and the engine was cold. But because now you are on one engine, you are required to land immediately, and they did. In those moments of terror, on the airplane, my partner watched what took place. He saw that most of the people lost all sense of anything but fear. What he did to sustain himself during moments that were challenging was to write about it, and he did. He had his computer open, and he wrote about what he saw. He experienced what fear can do to people. One moment they're fine, and another moment they think they're dying. These are the kinds of things that the dark consciousness of this planet would love to give you. If they can frighten you enough, you won't be interested in anything spiritual. You don't want to talk to yourselves. You don't want to find the God inside. All you want to do is survive. This is a wonderful tool. There's ways of treating fear. Right ways and wrong ways. Especially in low consciousness. In the battle, let me give you another example. This is not you. This is an example. The family is at the table. The brothers and sisters, many of them, are around the table. One little boy, he's about nine. He's difficult. He's a problem. He will do anything he can to be outside of the box. And he does something at the table with his parents and his brothers and his sisters, which is way outside the box, which is not nearly appropriate for anyone his age, and he knows better, and he does it anyway. There's a hush at the table. Everybody knows Johnny is in trouble. His father looks up from his food, slowly puts down his fork, and stares at Johnny. His father says nothing. And Johnny leaves the table and goes to his room because he knows what's coming. Scenario two. Little Johnny acts up, there's a hush at the table, and his father explodes. He yells, there's obscenities, even stands on his chair and throws food. He can't control himself. Go to your room. Little Johnny goes to his room laughing the whole way because he got what he wanted. And for years, his siblings, when they meet together and have a drink, will say, remember the time when you made dad throw food at the family? And they'll all have a good laugh. Now, the reason I tell you about this is because of what's happening right now with North Korea. Dear ones, this is not a prophecy. This is a lesson in fear. The leader of North Korea needs to impress. That's all he's about. His people must love him 
and see that he can stand up to the Father, which just happens to be the United States. And so he threatens, he comes close. Everything he does is to get a reaction. And he gets a reaction. In fact, there are those in the United States when he makes a statement that might even throw food. He gets what he wants. Every single time he'll launch a test, he gets what he wants. Flies in the face of the giant, the authority. And his people go, wow, this is really a leader. And at the same time, make no mistake, make no mistake. He knows that if he pushes the envelope, if he ever actually launches something with a warhead, if he does, he's dead. Everything stops. His regime stops. He doesn't create a war. He creates an event, probably about 15 minutes worth. And he's gone. His dynasty is gone, his country is gone, his leadership gone, and he has nobody to impress. He has to be careful. But he's got something. He's the master of fear and reaction. If he does this long enough, and he can develop his weapons to a higher point, and he just holds off and he rides the line, every single time he gets close, the United States will jump up and down and throw food. That's a metaphor. If he does it long enough, and his weapons get good enough, and he can prove, he can then get concessions. The United States has done that before. If you get too strong, you get concessions. Then his people will go, you slayed the giant. They came to their knees and gave you things. What a leader. By the way, this is in his mind. If you want to know the real things that the beautiful souls in North Korea feel, it's fear. They may not be informed on who you are, but they know what you can do. And they know as well as the leader does that they're only moments from death. If he does the wrong thing, they're afraid of him. There is not much love there. But in his mind, he is doing absolutely everything perfectly. The reactions that he's planned are fearful. He is scaring millions of people who are then wringing their hands, calling everybody there no, mad as they can be. Is it effective? Oh, yeah. This is the tool of fear. It can be done with a, with a country leader. It can be done with a father. It can be done with a friend. It can be done from a boss. It can even be done from a doctor who looks you in the eye and says, no hope for you. Dear ones, this is the tool that you're not going to have to worry about for long. There'll come a day when no human being will want to put another one in distress. A day when benevolence is the prime directive. Whether it's leader to leader in this planet or whether it's family member to family member. Whether it's father to son. The reaction that you would get won't be quiet steam. It'll be benevolence, solution, understanding. And it'll create good discipline with the loving family. It'll not be lost on the leadership where the prime directive will be harmony. Different cultures, different ways of doing things, very, very different approaches, but with one prime directive that you have a commonality of humanism. You don't kill each other. There will always be the unbalanced, dear ones, and there'll always be the exception. They won't be that which is the norm. Everything I've given you today, in perhaps a graphic form, was to ask you to stay out of fear. If you're having trouble with the current situation, 
on this planet. Stop looking at it. And you'll say, why? Crying has just told us not to be knowledgeable about our own business on this planet. I will tell you this, dear ones, if it makes you afraid, stop it. If you have the ability to see it for what it is, recognizing, oh yes, there are potentials that you haven't seen. What if he makes a mistake? What if he oversteps his bounds? What if, what if, what if? If it makes you afraid, don't study it. If it keeps you informed without fear, then that is a maturity that you can have. Do you understand the difference? If there's someone at work who tries to intimidate you and make you afraid of them, learn the three second rule. <laughs> it's going to start here in the stomach, in the gut. And before it gets there to the, to the brain that says, I'm going to lose my job. What you do is you think of the benevolence and you think here is a man or a woman having a bad day. Here is a man or a woman who is unbalanced. I'm not going to be part of the unbalance. I'm going to project benevolence to them. I'm not going to come back at them. I'm not going to look like a hurt puppy. I'm not going to react in a way they expect. It will be in benevolence. It will be in love. They won't get a reaction and I'm not going to throw food. <laughs> That's a metaphor. In case you just tuned into the channel. Do you see where I'm going with this? Light worker, learn about the tool of fear and how to combat it. And if you have to bring that higher self instantly in, do it. If you have to be at a soul level, if you have to flip into meditation, whatever it takes, the three second rule, you hear about something that will frighten others and you sit there and you say, not today, not for me. That's what I gave my partner when the airliner engine caught on fire. Not me, not today. And his reasoning was this, if we land and there's a problem, I have got to be succinct because I'm sitting in an exit row. <laughs> My partner is one of the few who actually listens to those who tell him about what to do. If he became fearful, he wouldn't remember a thing. He wouldn't be able to help anybody out the door. That's how he thinks. And in that responsibility, voided fear. What's your responsibility to light? And I'll tell you what it is. Know all about fear. Know how it works. Feel it if you have to. Again, so you know how to avoid it. You might be the only sane head in a group of people who are afraid. And that will be so attractive. Because in fear, somebody wants to hold somebody's hand who's not afraid. <laughs> And that would be you who say, there is more than you think coming. It's going to be fine. We'll be all right. We'll get through this. You don't know what you don't know. Light workers, light warriors, that's one of the tools you're going to have to master. And in order to know it and use it, you're going to have to understand fear. How it's manipulated how it works, what it wants, what it seems to want to accomplish. The darkness will not overcome you if you expect it and know the rules. This is brought to you in love today. Because you've been through it and you've feared in the past. And it's time to have instructions that go beyond the fear and show you what it is. Instead of just saying, well, it's time to say an affirmation and you'll be fine. You need to feel it. You need to know the three-second rule. You need how to manipulate it. You need to have some kind of tool that you will have within your innate that keeps you maybe sick to your stomach, but not sick in your brain or your consciousness. Where your consciousness remains tight with the light of the love of God. That's enough for now. 
I want you to leave this place differently than you came. I want you to know that you are a warrior of the light. Light follows you. Light wants to be with you. Benevolence follows you. Harmony follows you. If you haven't felt it, maybe it's time that you drop the barriers. Take the hand of the higher self and say, show me. I'm ready. And so it is.